from then we, we moved on to, you know, we started to think that we might be capable of more. And we moved on to places like uh, the mountains of Pakistan. This is Uli Biaho. I didn't climb it. I'm very impressed with the guys that did. Um, but it's just a couple of shots of the pretty mountains of the Karakoram Range in Pakistan and the people in Pakistan, uh, the, a group of porters on their way to the end of the road to, to get their loads, um, a, a little look at the villages in these alluvial fans in the foothills of the Karakoram. This village is at about 10,000 feet and, and walking through these villages is like walking through the 14th century. It's just an amazing trip back in time. Um, but I, I grew to be very, very fond of the people that we worked with and spent time with. Uh, and I think that that's one of, the great, one of the great assets that we bring to the table as international climbers. The American Alpine Club is, as we speak, negotiating to, to exchange uh, an exchange with, with uh, Iran where Iranian climbers will come to the United States and American climbers will go there. And I, I really have a strong feeling that, you know, climbers want to go climbing and mountains don't care where they live. And, 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 and as a result, there's a huge opportunity for camaraderie and breaking down these political barriers because we have, a, we have a common value, a common goal, a common agreement that we love the mountains and we love to go climbing and that's our common ground. And that was a very, very strong experience for me during my seven or eight seasons of going to Pakistan and spending time with my good friend Amat here on your right and Ghulam here on your left. Um, we went over in 1987 for the first time. I was in Yosemite and we were climbing and uh, a, a group of my friends said, let's go climb this mountain. I, it's called Gashiram 2. There's never been an American expedition to, to climb it, though there had been an American individual who had climbed it. Uh, and then another group of my friends oh, said, oh, we want to go rock climbing. Uh, so we want to go to Pakistan and go rock climbing. And, and so I said, uh, I said, well, I just want to do both, and that's what I did. Uh, this is a this is Gashabram too. It's an 8,000 meter peak. Um, you know, this was our first experience uh, climbing in the big mountains. There were five of my friends from Wyoming, uh, and and we we ventured over to these 8,000 meter peaks, and we con we confronted all kinds of difficulties. We had an avalanche that wiped out our camp at one point, and and. Uh, we, we ran out of food with our porters and had to allow them to go home. And we just started ferrying loads into the mountains deeper and deeper. And I, this is a view back at Camp One from higher on the mountain. I'll just show a couple of quick shots. Uh, as I said, our camp at one point was wiped out by an avalanche. It destroyed one of our two tents. Um, but it didn't really stop our trip because we just figured, you know, we're winter camping professionals. We know how to build uh, igloos and snow caves. So that's what we did. We built snow caves and this is what I call a digloo. It's half igloo, half snow cave at about 7,000 meters, 23,000 feet high on Gashabram 2. And we reached the summit uh, in great style. Here on the right is Mal Miller, still a good friend of mine, Dan Heilig who still runs Jackson Hole Mountain Guides with me up in the Tetons and myself in the middle. They're not really holding me up like they look like, like they are. And then uh, I went out, I went out that summer and uh, rested for like two or three days and then came back into the mountains with another group of people to do some rock climbing. And this is the rock we decided to climb. It's called, it's called Lukpilab Rock. It's about a 5,000 foot wall from, a, from here where we began the climbing up through the route that we ended up doing to the top. It's a beautiful peak on the Biafo Glacier. Uh, we had all kinds of fun adventures, including great climbing, again with my partner who I've mentioned before, Greg Collins, and again, here he is leading the crux pitch. Um, it, was, it was really a beautiful sort of end to a wonderful summer, uh, but it wasn't without its difficulty. Uh, after getting a little ways up the wall, it snowed and we went down. 
uh, leaving a rope in place over that crux pitch that I showed you before. And then on the way back up, we got to that crux pitch and that rope that we'd left in place. And Greg looked up at that rope and he said, you know, that rope's been here for four or five days and it's been really windy and it's probably been rubbing on rocks and it could be dangerous. I mean, it could be half sawn through or there could be a rat up there that's been eating on it. You never know. This could be a problem. And I said, yeah, this is a, you're right, it's, it's a problem. And he said, we need to make a very good decision here. We need to send up the smallest person. <laughs> because that person's less likely to break the rope, and there I am, there I am. This was our high point, or our high camp, on uh, the western edge of Lakpilabrock. And a couple of pitches uh, on our summit day. And the route itself. Uh, it took us seven days in two attempts. We were on the mountain seven days, but we came down for four in the middle.